Well, praise the Lord. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for, praise God, another opportunity to come and share with you the Word of God. Praise God. I count it a blessing, a great honor, and a privilege to have this opportunity. I'm Pastor James A. Dansby of Great Commission Fellowship here in Birmingham, Alabama. Praise God. So glad to be able to come once again. And uh, on this Wednesday, praise God, February the 3rd, isn't it? I believe it is. Praise God. Thank God. It's a blessing to be able to come once again. And I do have a word. I have another word from the Lord just for you today. Praise God. Thank God for Jesus today. Turn in your Bibles to Luke, the second chapter. Praise God. I, I not encourage you to study with me. Look with me and study with me because... Praise God. I believe the Lord has a word for you today, just for you. Praise God. God has a word to bless you, to enlighten you, and uh, just to encourage you, praise God, to, to look deep into the word of God because it's a treasure chest. Praise God. That's all kind of goodies in the word of God. Luke second chapter. We're going to begin reading at verse 20. I'm going to start here at verse 20. Let's look at 25. Two, Luke 2, and we'll start at 25. Praise God. The Lord is good. Amen. Luke 2 uh, and 25 there. Well, I think that'll be a good place to start there. Oh, boy. All right, then. It says here, and behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And it says here, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him, and it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when uh, the parents brought the child Jesus, it says here, to do for him after the custom of the law, they took him, they took him uh, up, and he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let it thou, thy servant, depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. A light, he says, to lighten the Gentiles, and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him, and Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and the rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. And he says to Mary in that 35th verse, Yea, a sword shall pierce thine through thine own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Praise God. We 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 want to look that that thirty fourth verse is where we want to really pay close attention. And I, I'm going to take a thought from that uh, one verse there. And it says here that and Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child he says this child is set for the fall and the rising again of many in Israel. And for a sign that shall be spoken against. Father, bless your word today. Father, as we, Lord, as we delve down into your word today, we pray your Holy Spirit might enlighten me, Father. And we pray that you'll just uh, anoint the ears of those that are hearing your word today. Lord, bring clarity to your word. Encourage our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Uh, in that uh, 34th verse there, he says that this child, Simeon, uh, this old gentleman says, this child is set for the fall and the rising again of many in Israel. So we're going we're gonna to use those words. Praise God, those very words. In Christ, you fall or you rise. In Christ now, you either going to fall or you going to to rise. That's how important it is. But he is. Praise God to each and every one of us. Praise God. You know, a lot of times people ask me, said, uh, you know, why you try to make a difference between the people in the church? And I, I, I tell them because Jesus makes a difference. Jesus has always made a difference between uh, the saved and the unsaved. 
those who are on the Lord's side and those who are not on the Lord's side. He has always made a difference. But people sometimes ask me, they say, well, you, you seem to try to make a difference, but there is a difference. And I know a lot of pastors don't, you know, they don't uh, really uh, try to make that distinction between children of God and the children of the devil, uh, the wheat and the tares, the sheep and the goats. They don't try. They, they, they don't want to go there because they, it, they seem to think they're discouraging people. But, you know, I'm about telling you the truth. Praise God. Jesus said the truth shall, it'll, it'll make you free. Praise God. But now here's an old man named Simeon uh, here. Uh, he is he hangs around at the temple all the time here. And uh, evidently he has gotten a word from the Lord. Praise God. Uh, in answer to his prayer, I'm sure. I'm sure that his prayer has been, uh, Lord, I, I, I really want to see the Messiah. I want to see the Messiah that the Old Testament has been prophesied uh, uh, to come uh, many, many, many hundreds of years. And uh, he, his prayer was that he might be able to see this child. So what did he do? He hung around at the temple. That's what the place he stayed most all the time at the temple, uh, especially, you know, when the children were coming in, because according to Jewish law, the males after eight days had to be circumcised and the circumcision took place right there in the temple. So this old guy, he hung around there, praise God, and just waiting until the Holy Spirit points to him that particular family, that particular child that is to be the Messiah. So now Mary and Joseph came in with the child and the Holy Spirit for pointed out to him that that kid, that baby there is the Messiah. Praise God. So he went near. He went near. Praise God. Can you imagine the old guy? And I'm sure that Mary and Joseph probably didn't know him. And uh, But now he, he goes near with his hands out. He wants to hold that baby. Praise God. And they put that baby in his arms. And praise God. He says, he says these here great words. Praise God that we see right here. He said, behold, this child is set for the fall and the rising of many people in Israel and for a sign that shall be spoken against. That was his words right there. And they said, now, Lord, I can depart in peace. I can die now, Lord, because I've seen the Messiah. Praise God. Now, Simeon, praise God, he says here basically that Christ has been set. That's the, he has been set. That's the word he uses here, or uh, shall we say appointed. He has been appointed for the falling of many in the rising of others. That's basically what he said. Through this child, many will fall. And through this child, many shall be what? Lifted up. They shall rise. It's what he says. So now he came, he came into this world, he said here, basically that Christ came to draw some to himself. And to, praise God, drive others away from him. He draws, he drives. How we? How many times we've heard that? Praise God, over and over again. Christ will either draw you to him or he'll drive you away from him. But that's what basically what Simeon said. This child, it, 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 through him, many going to fall and many will rise. That's basically what he said. In other words, he said Christ came to be a stepping stone to some. You're going to step up. Praise God, some going to step up. Praise God. And at the same time, he'll be a stumbling stone to others. Hmm. One, wh wh who are you right now? Are, would, which of these categories are you in right now? Praise God. That's a good question. All of us need to ask ourselves that question right now. First Peter 2, First Peter 2nd chapter. And uh, if you look at verse 7 and 8 there, it says here, Unto you therefore that believe he is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, he says here, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. He said, and a stumbling stone and a rock of offense, he says, even to them that stumble at the word being what? Disobedient. Wherein therefore they were appointed, some appointed to disobedient, some set to disobedient. Now, Simeon says, 
you know, and I, I think he, and he, we know he's speaking by the power of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit brought him in there. The Holy Spirit uh, gave him a word of comfort. And so now it's by the power of the Holy Spirit that Christ is set, he says, and appointed by God the Father to be the, the, the main source of power in the world today. Hmm? To take some down, praise God. While at the same time, he's lifting others up. Mm. Now, in this gospel, saturated world that we live in today, in the, in the world, is sat, it's, it's the Bible everywhere. Praise God. I go sometimes in the flea market and you got Bibles everywhere. So that Bible's everywhere. We got them all in our homes and everything. So this world is, is saturated with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise God. And at the very moment now, at the very moment, because of the accessibility of the Word of God so easily, so economically uh, 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 able for everybody to have one. Praise God. Therefore, hmm, this very moment, you're either falling or you're rising. You're either saved or you're unsaved based on the availability of the Word of God. Hmm. But now, before we delve into this a little bit deeper here. Let, let's, 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 first of all, it's important, I believe, that I give you uh, a definition, uh, define exactly what the gospel really means. So now, if everything pivots here on Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ, what is the gospel of Jesus Christ? Or uh, better still, instead of me tell, I, I, instead of me telling you, Let's let the Bible define what the gospel of Jesus Christ is. You turn to 1 Corinthians with me. 1 Corinthians, let's look at that real quickly now. Let this be your study time, your hour of study here. 1 Corinthians 15 chapter, and we're going to look at verse 1, and verse 1 through 4 there, verse 1 through 4. And Paul says here that, moreover, brethren, I declare, he said, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also, he says, you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Now watch these next two verses, verse 3 and verse 4. He's going to give us a definition of what the gospel of Jesus Christ is. Look what he says here now. He said, for I delivered unto you first of all that which also I received how that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture, he says. And that last verse, that he was buried and that he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. Hmm? So now, what is the gospel of Jesus Christ? This gospel that uh, is a, a pivoting point as to whether or not we go up or whether or not we go down. What is this gospel according to Paul's definition here in 1 Corinthians? It's the death. The gospel is the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's basically what it is. It's the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Dying on the cross now. Dying on the cross for what? For our sins. Praise God. He died for our sins. Hmm? That's the gospel. That we might have forgiveness for our sins. And that the penalty and the power of sin might be removed from our lives. That's the gospel. Praise God. Death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, those of us who put our faith and trust in his finished work on the cross, we will rise up with him uh, to heights unimaginable. Mm, praise God. And to those who don't put our trust in him, uh, well, you're going to fall to the lowest, uh, I'm going to be nice, Haiti. No, no, just the Bible called it hell. Then you're going you're gonna to go down to the pit of hell. That's what the Bible says. And most of us now, most of us have, at one time or another, we've heard the gospel, though. Most of us are cannot say, we cannot say we have not heard the gospel. Because most of us have heard the gospel. Amen. Uh, we've heard testimonies from friends and, praise God, from our loved ones. Uh, about Jesus dying on the cross for our sins. Praise God. We heard that. And uh, our response at that moment has been, praise God, it's been different responses. Amen. Uh, but either you characterize, uh, you know, in your response, you are either in the in the uh, group of those that are falling 
or you will be categorized in the group of those that are rising based on what? Your response. Based on your response to the gospel. When you hear the gospel, whether it come through church, testimony, friends, loved ones, when you hear it, you have to bring forth a natural response. And your response will either put you in the rising group, rising closer to the Lord, or the falling group, going lower, going toward your final home, which is not a good place. Now, a positive response to the gospel is to repent of your sins. That's a positive response. When we repent of our sins and ask the Lord for forgiveness, praise God. That's a part. That's a, what I call a, a positive response. Amen. When we ask him for forgiveness now and Lord, save me. Ask the Lord to just say, save, save me, Lord. Ask, forgive me, Lord, and save me. And then you got to mean it from your heart, though. See, you know, a lot of people say, well, I've done that already, Pastor. But did you mean it from your heart? See, because when you mean it from your heart, praise God, the Lord will give you the blessing, the Holy Spirit to come and live in your heart. I think Jeremiah 29 and 13, somewhere in that neighborhood said, when you seek me with all your heart, then you'll find me. See, you can't have heartily ask God to save you. You got to mean it from your heart. And when you mean it from your heart, then the Lord has promised that he will in no wise, praise God, turn you away. That's the word of God. But now a negative, a negative response would be to do nothing when you hear it. When people testify and tell you how good the Lord is, when pray people, when you're in church and you hear the gospel of Jesus Christ and your response is not to law, you, it's no response at all. You ignore it. You just ignore that good news. You refuse to accept the Lord's forgiveness. Now, at that very moment, praise God, you are falling. Mm -hmm. You are falling. There were two responses here. Either you're going up or you're going down. But at that moment that you decide that you are going to ignore or, or, or just sit there and, and, and have no response at all, you're falling. You're falling farther and farther away from the mercy of God. Hmm? And anytime you hear, praise God, anytime you hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, it demands an immediate response. A yea, praise God, a nay, a yes, a no. And I know a lot of you want to find middle ground. Well, you know, I'm just kind of in the middle. Well, there ain't no in the middle. There's no, there's no in the middle. I hadn't made up my mind yet. Well, yes, you have made up your mind. If you didn't say yes to the Lord, you have made up your mind. And you are falling and you are not rising, where you, which, I, which is where most people want to go. They want to rise up in this life. But you're going to go down because everything's pivot upon Christ. It's all about Christ. It's all about Christ. Through this child, Simeon said, some going to rise and some are going to fall. And you just got to, you know, ask yourself, Lord, where am I at in this whole scheme of things here? Now, just like this old man Simeon here, when you first come in contact with Jesus, uh, you will either, praise God, you'll either love him when you first hear about him or come in contact with him or in what way, in some way or another, you're going to either love him or, or you're going to do like those Simeon there. You're going to take him in your arms, praise God, and you're going to just love him. Hmm? That's going to be your response or you will stand, stand back and, and with indifference and, you know, and uh, just trying to make up your mind, undecided as to what you want to do with him, praise God. But now, actually, when you are undecided, you have decided. You are at that point in a fallen state at that very moment. Your indec indecision or uh, uh, decisive uh, uh, answer there is a decisive answer toward going the wrong direction. Praise God. Hmm. Matthew 12 and 3. Matthew 12 and 3. If you look at that, Matthew 12 and 3, look at it now. It says, he that, gee, what did Jesus say that? He that is not with me is what? You gets me. Hmm? He that gathereth not with me is you scattered abroad. You're just going to scatter. Hmm? You're going down is what he's saying here. you either with me or you're against me. Hmm? And no middle ground here. You, well, I ain't decided yet. Well, your undecided uh, situation is a, decide, is a decision against Christ. Hmm. That's no middle ground. That's no middle ground. I know you wish it was, but there's no middle ground. With Christ said, with me, you, you will rise. But against me, 
you're going to fall. It's just as simple as that. That's what the old man Simeon said. This child, this little child here, he's going to be the pivot point. Uh, through this child, many will go up. Praise God, go up. I'm talking about go up. Uh, basically, I'm talking about go up to heaven with the Lord. But now I'm talking about going up in this life here. Praise God, up, spiritually up. I'm not talking about material things now. I'm talking about up. I'm talking about spiritually up. That's what he said here. Yeah. But with me, you shall rise. And, and against me, you're going to fall. But now I like what Paul I like what the Apostle Paul, uh, how he described Christ in that 2 Corinthians. Turn 2 Corinthians 2 there. 2 Corinthians 2. Let me get it quickly here. I got my gym clips in it. 2 Corinthians 2 here. Look at 2 Corinthians 2 and, and 15 and 16. Look at that now. I like how Paul describes uh, th this gospel of Christ here. He says here that, uh, for we are unto God, for we are unto God a sweet savor, of Christ, in them that are saved and in them that are perishing. Now look at that 16th verse there. He said, to one, to the one, we are the savor unto death, and to the other, we are the savor of life unto life, he says. And who is sufficient unto these things? Now, I love the way he put that. See, now Paul says here that Christ is like, He's like a sweet-smelling perfume, a savor, a sweet-smelling perfume. I don't care if you open that perfume here in, in this my in my study here. I'm gonna smell it whether I want to smell it or not. Praise God! Everybody gonna smell it if you if people around gonna smell it whether they want to smell it or not. Praise God! And it's like that with the Word of God, the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise God! When His Gospel is preached, when His Word fills the air or wherever we may be. You can't help but to hear it. You can't help but to hear it. It's like smelling perfume. You got to hear it. So at that very moment, you have to decide whether you love the smell, love him, or whether you hate him. I wish it was a middle ground here, but it's not. I'm sorry, it's not. You either up, going up, or you're going down. You either love him or you don't love him. That's the word of God. Amen. Isaiah 55, if you look that quickly, Isaiah 55, and look at 11. Isaiah 55, and we're going to look at 11. Praise God. He says, the Lord says here, my word shall not return to me void. Praise God. In other words, there's going to be a response. You got to respond to it. When he put it out there, when the gospel goes out there, it's you're responsible. It's your thing. You got to do something with it. Amen. It, dem it demands em an immediate response. It does. Immediate response. Praise God. You just can't, uh, well, just can't forget about it. Amen. He says here that it's going to accomplish that which I please. My word won't return void, but it's going to accomplish that which I please, he says. And it shall prosper in the things whereunto I sent it. Hmm. Wherefore I sent it. Hmm. Wow. It's going to either get a negative response or positive response. How are you responding to the gospel of Jesus Christ? Is it positive? Is it negative? Is it going up? Are you getting stronger? Hmm? Or are you going down? Are you getting weaker? Praise God. Weaker in this life or stronger in this life? Headed toward heaven or headed toward hell? Now, that's the question there. We got to ask ourselves. Praise God. But you know, I can we can compare the gospel to to the air more or less. Just let's let's make a few comparisons, you know. Uh let's say the gospel is like the air we breathe. Well, the air that I breathe, it demands a response. Immediate response. You either breathe it in and live and rise up, or you refuse to breathe, you die and you fall down. Is it simple as that? Amen. Praise God. The, the gospel of Jesus Christ, it's like the air we breathe. It's like the food we eat. Praise God. It demands immediate response. Either you eat the food and live and have your body nourished and built up and rise up, or you don't eat it. Praise God. And you began to fall down. You began to die out. Am I right about that? Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I am the bread. Man don't live by bread alone, not natural bread, but by every word that proceeds out of my mouth. I am the bread of life. 
Hmm? Praise God, your fathers, they ate that bread in the wilderness and they dead, but praise God, I'm the real thing. Eat me and you shall live forever except you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. You don't have no life. You have no life in you whatsoever. That's the word of God. Praise God, this gospel is like hell. It's like the food we breathe. It's like the water we drink. The water we drink. It, remind, it, remind, it, 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 it demands a response. You can drink it. And you can live, you can rise up, or you can not drink it, and you're going to die. You're going to fall. Both of them, all these here, they demand, praise God, a response from us. It's just like that with Christ. I mean, it's the same thing with Christ. You just can't be nonchalant and say, well, you know, I ain't decided yet. Yeah, your indecision, indeciding is already a decision for the other side. Amen. You're falling. It's what, you're falling. You're in a fallen state. Praise God. You can receive Christ as your Lord and Savior and be saved, or you can refuse him, and then you're going to die. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Not just a natural death, but eternal death. Praise God. See, Christ is necessary for our souls. He's very necessary. Praise God. Just like the air, the food, the water. Praise God. Christ is necessary to our soul. And they all call for quick responses. You can't just, well, I'm going to do it later on. How you know you're going to be here later on? Who told you that? Huh? Praise God. You got the moment you hear my voice. He said, you harden not your heart. Today is the day of salvation. Calls for quick response right now. Praise God. Are you a fall? Do you die? You got to respond to the word of God immediately. And, and remember this now. Remember this here, that, 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 that Christ is, is now it, it, it being brought into the temple at this time. Now, at this very time, he's brought into the temple by Mary and Joseph. And here come the old man there to take him in his arms. Now, when I read that, the Lord kind of led me to Malachi. He said, look at Malachi 3. You look with me. Look at Malachi 3 there. I'm going to turn quickly. Malachi 3. And uh, he came into the temple, right? Look at Malachi 3. And we're going to look at 1. Uh, one, one, two, and three. Malachi three, one, two, and three. Look what it says. Behold, the Lord says here. Behold, I, I will send my messenger. The Lord says I'm gonna send my messenger. That's what He says here. And He will prepare. Now this 400 years before Christ came. Now, and He will prepare the way before me. Talk about John the Baptist here, messenger. He gonna prepare the way for me. And the Lord, whom I you seek, shall suddenly, He says, shall suddenly come into His temple. Huh? Even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who shall abide the day of his coming? Who shall stand when he appeared? Hmm? And he answered the question, for he is like a, a full of a refiner's fire and like full of soap. But he shall sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver, he says, and he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as silver and gold that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness, he says. Now, Malachi states here that the Lord would come into his temple. Now, this is the first appearance he has a baby, but we know he appeared other times also. Matter of fact, once a year, they went in. Praise God. But now he said that the Lord would appear. He would come into the temple as a refiner's fire. That's what, that's, what, that's what Malachi says. And he will separate. Now, that's the word we don't like to hear, do we? Hmm? I know your pastor don't tell you. I know your pastor preached to you the, uh, like everybody is saved in there. He won't tell you that there's a difference. He won't, he won't tell you that probably most of the people sitting in your congregation are not saved. They don't know the Lord. Praise God. But now, the Lord says here, uh, through Malachi, that he would separate when he come, the precious metals from that dross that's mixed with it. And so it is when the gospel of Jesus Christ is preached to us. The pure in heart will rise to the top, just like that pure metal, that pure gold. Praise God, you put the heat on it, rise to the top. Praise God. Unrighteous, that reprobate silver, though, that reprobate stuff, it's going to fall down. It's going to the bottom. All that slag, all that old stuff going down to the bottom. Huh? What is God saying here? God going to separate. God separate. Praise God. I thank God today. I know I've been saved. I know I've been separated. I've been called out from among them. I've been called out from the world. 
Praise God. And I'm, I'm glad about it. I, I, I'm glad about it. Praise God. Somebody will guide me one time. It, it, it ought to be kind of lonely in that life. I said, no, brother, I ain't lonely. I ain't never been lonely. Praise God. I mean, the Lord have a good time. We always have a good time. Praise God. But now, if you look at John 3, look at John 3 quickly there. 317. I'm going to go ahead on with this here. Look at John 17. John 3 and 17, that is. It says, here, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. He didn't, okay, but that the world through him might be what? Saved. Now look at that 18 verse. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Why? Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Praise God. Some are condemned. Some are not condemned. They that believe are not condemned. They that believe not are condemned. Hmm? Already, he said, at that very moment, at that very moment, you're falling when you reject Christ. You're falling. You're falling. Don't let, don't let your status in this life uh, uh, lie to you like you're doing well. No, you're falling. If you don't have Christ, you're falling, and you will recognize that in not too many days hence. Amen? Now, when, Christ, when, when God spoke these words to Simeon, he was speaking directly about uh, uh, the religious leaders of his time. That's what he, he was looking at. He was thinking of them. The Holy Spirit was the Christ rejectors of that time. But they, they, they had elevated their traditions, their man made traditions above the pure word of God. Praise God. They were fallen. Why? Because they put God's word in the background. Hmm? Amen. And uh, Mal, uh, Matthew 15, if you look there, praise God, we'll look at one scripture there. Matthew 15, look at 15 and 1 there, 15 and 1. It says, uh, then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying unto him, why do thy disciples transgress the traditions of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. And Jesus answered and said unto them, why do you also transgress the commandments of God by your traditions? Why is it that you put your traditions ahead of my word? Hmm? See, these are signs of a generation that are falling away from God. When they elevate traditions, man-made days above the word of God. And that's what we have today. Praise God. Leaving the word of God, leaving the salvation message. You, we don't hear that much about getting saved today in these churches, huh? Leaving the holiness message. You know you don't hear that. Be holy, for God is holy. And and the sanctified message come out from among them. You know, we don't hear much of that in the church no more. How evil sin is. Hmm? Praise God for 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 man made man made traditional messages. It's what we hear today. Praise God. Men Day, Women Day, uh, 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 Mother's Day, uh, Easter, Christmas, uh, Halloween, Black History Month, social program, prosperity, gospel, healing ministry. We hear all that kind of stuff. But I don't hear much about repentance. You need to repent of your sins. You need to ask God to forgive. You need to get on your knees and beg God to save you. We don't hear much about that today, do we? We don't hear much about being born again. You need to be born again of the Spirit of God. See, all of these things are absent in this church today. Praise God. They're gone. They're gone. They're gone. They're gone. Oh, people got itching ears. You know, uh, one, one big preacher there in California, uh, Texas out there, I think he's in San Antonio, Texas somewhere, said, my people don't come to be or have their feelings hurt here. They come to hear good stuff. Praise God. Hmm? That's not God's preacher there. Huh? He may be some type of preacher, but it ain't God's preacher. Huh? Because we preach the whole gospel. The good part, the bad part, every bit of it. Amen? Praise God. I'm commanded to do it. But now, uh, another group that existed during Christ's time uh, 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 that can be said to be falling away uh, from God is, is those whose religion was all about, it was all, uh, all, all, all on the outside of them. Praise God. Had that external religion rather than, praise God, internal. Second Timothy 3, 5. Second Timothy 3, 5 there. He says they have a form of godliness. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. They is all on the outside. Praise God. The power to live a holy and a sanctified life. Praise God. Mm. They deny that. They live any kind of way. 
Praise God. Live like a hog in a hog pen. Amen. No changed life. No changed life at all. See, Matthew 23 and 5, 23 and 5, uh, he said, they make broad their phylacteries. Praise God. Enlarge the borders of the garments. Hmm? The main concern is their outward appearance. Praise God. They're like a peacock. They want to strut with like a peacock, want everybody to see what's on the outside. Uh, in that uh, 23 and 6, that next verse there, it said they love the uppermost rooms at the feast, the chief seats in the synagogue. Praise God. They want nobody, want everybody to see them. Praise God. These kind of people are, these are the ones that are falling down. They ain't rising. These are the ones he was pointing to. The Simeon, the Holy Spirit was speaking of that are falling instead of rising. They want to be seen. Praise God. They want, they full of themselves. They think they are all this in a bag of chips or something. Amen. But to see, all these people are destined to fall. They're destined to fall into the pit of hell. There's another group. There's another group that are destined to fall into the pit of hell. Praise God. That's that self-righteous group. I mean, know them self-righteous folk in the church today. Praise, praise God. Luke 18 and, and 9. Now, Luke 18 and 9 said they trust in themselves that they are, are, are righteous and despise others. They think they are right. Hmm? It ain't nothing wrong with them. It's the other man. Amen. They think highly of themselves. Praise God. Of their family. Oh, their family. I come from a aristocrat family here. Their, their family name, their education. Uh, scripture said they like to be called rabbi. Rabbi. Hmm? Someone want to be called doctor today. I don't know. There's so many preachers want to, they want to be doctors today. And many of them, praise God, they ain't got no earned doctor's degree. They got that doctor's degree out of Cracker Jack box or something. I don't know where they get that thing from. But then they want to be called reverend. They want people to look up to them. See, these are the kind that are falling. Huh? These kind that are falling, they're falling away from God because they're all about themselves, bragging about their financial stability. Praise God, we're all on a banana peel here. We need to trust in God, amen? Their reputation. See, but you know, they, but there's another group that know it all. They know everything. Jesus talked about the war until you lawyers, doctors of religion, scribes and Pharisees. They know it all. That group is falling too. If you're in that group, you are headed downhill. Praise God. Job 5, 13. Job 5 and 13 uh, says he taking the wise in their own craftiness. Praise God. He taking the wise in their own craftiness. And 1 Corinthians 3, 19. 1 Corinthians 3, 19 says the, the, the wisdom of this world is foolishness to God. To think you know so much. Praise God, don't know a thing. Don't know nothing. See, but all these men, these type of personalities here, they they, they fall. They're going to fall. Praise God. They failed on Christ's time, and we have the same people today, same spirit, and they're going to fall today. They all had one thing in common. All of them had one thing in common. They trusted in the outward religion. Praise God. But the Bible says, what, Romans 3? Romans 3, 20, we know that. By the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. You can go to church all you want to go to church. You can stay in there. You can live in there. Put your bunk bed up in there. Praise God and give all your money. You can go Monday through Saturday, Sunday, but it won't save you none. Praise God. Huh? See, now, these are, they all have had this in common. They thought their works was going to save them, and but they had no inner spiritual life. Huh? Romans 8 9 says, so Christ said, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. If you don't have Christ's spirit in you, you're not a child of God. You may be a church folks. You may be a church goer, but if you don't have the spirit of God in you, oh, praise God, you're not saved. You're not saved. They're not born again. These people are not born again. In John 3, we know 3 3, except a man be born again, he cannot see. You can't even see it. Hmm? They're lost. These people are fallen people. They're lost and they're fallen. They're unsaved. They're on their way to Hades. Huh? Or hell. Can we say it like that? So now we have to look at the souls that will fall uh, because of their decisions about Jesus. Their decisions uh, about Jesus, what caused them to fall. Uh, then... Who are the ones that are going to rise then? We looked at the one going to fall now, but who's going to rise up here right? because of their decisions they made concerning Jesus? Who are these people that are destined to fall? Luke 1, 52. Luke 1, 52. Look that quickly. Luke 1, 52. He says, he has put down what? The mighty from their seats. Exalted them of low degree, he says. He filled the hungry with good things. The rich he sent away empty. 
Who are the ones that gonna rise? It's the souls that acknowledge their unworthiness. Hmm? Lord, I'm not worthy. Their sinfulness. They acknowledge their fallen state that will not allow them. I've fallen and I just can't get up. They acknowledge that fact that they're falling in some kind of sin trap. They sin sick. I'm in the bondage of sin, Lord. Praise God. These are the ones that rise. You got to acknowledge you first. James 4.10 says, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Hmm? If this is you today, praise God. If this is you today in your condition today, you're falling into some kind of sin trap here, and you're willing to rise up in Christ. If you can say yes to the Lord today, the Holy Spirit, praise God, is speaking to you right now. Philippians 2.13, praise God, it tells us it is God that working in you both to will and to do the will and, and the will to do of his good will. See, if you're willing right now to give it all to the Lord, God, the Holy Spirit working in you. He working us both the will, the both the will and to do. He give us the will to want to do right and the power to do it also. Praise God. We serve our great God, don't we? Our God is wonderful. John 6, 44. Jesus said, no man can come to me except the Father which sent me draw him. No man can come to me except the Father who sent me draw him. That's the Lord there. See, before a person can rise up, before you can rise up in Christ, you first got to fall down to yourself. Hmm? Before we can rise up. Amen. See, the Lord can't fill you until he first empty you. The Lord can't close you, brothers and sisters, until he stripped you down naked where you ain't nobody. Amen. The Lord can't feed you until you get hungry. You got to be hungry. Hungry. Bless those that hunger and thirst for righteousness. In Deuteronomy 32, look what the Lord says in the Old Testament, 32 and 39. He says, I kill and I make alive. He got to kill you first. Hmm? Then he'll turn around and he'll raise you up. He said, I wound you and then I'll heal you. You got to go through that process. You got to be brought down first before you can go up in the Lord. Praise God. But now, lastly, before we close out here, in that 34th verse there, praise God, that 34th verse there, in of Luke 2, Simeon said uh, uh, these words about Jesus here. He said, he shall be a sign that shall be spoken against. He shall be a sign that is spoken against. Hmm? And remember now, who were the ones that spoke against him? Who was the one that said crucify him? Who was the one that tried to push him off the brow of the hill? Who was the one that tried to kill him all the time? Church folks. Hmm? Who are the ones that rejecting the word of God today? Hmm? Oh boy, church folks. Hmm? You're rejecting the word. The word said thou shalt not kill. Hmm? You say it's a woman's right to do what she wants to with her body. See, the only church folks that talk like that. You're not your own. You're bought with a pride. Your, your body belongs. Did you make yourself? Hmm? No, no. Church folks have turned against the word of God. And you are saying crucify him. Crucify him. Just like they did yesterday. You need to repent, church folks. You sided with the enemy. You're going over to the crowd, the abortion crowd. You're over with the crowd of the transgenders. You're on this bandwagon. Hmm? Well, religious speech is being threatened now because of church folks. Hmm? Repent. The Lord said, repent today. And then I will raise you up. Hmm? If you don't repent, then the Bible says you're falling down. But God is a good God. He's giving you an opportunity right now. Praise God to repent, ask your wife for forgiveness. He'll save you. I know he will. Praise God. God bless you. If you like this video, go over and hit that like button. And then just back up and hit this other button over here, subscription button. And when I come again, praise God, I hope you'll be glad to hear me. I hope you'll be glad to see me. But I'm going to come anyway. God bless you. May God keep you until we come again. Amen.